So, you want to start a war. Well, you've either started your own country or overthrown one, and have now cemented yourself in power. But your thirst, it's not quite quenched yet, is it? You need more, and oh boy, is war a great tool to get more. That's why I'm here, to give you all the advice you need on how to start your very own war. Not only is war a great tool to expand your ever-hungry empire, but it's also a great way to subdue the populace under your control. For example, the perpetual war of Orwell's book 1984 has no true effect on the borders whatsoever, yet solely exists to keep the ruling ideologies in power. It does a tremendous job of it. Oh hey, look at that. Now to start, you need to realize, nobody starts a war to get a long, drawn-out conflict like most wars are. People start wars because they think they're quick and easy and will efficiently complete their goals. Of course, this is not how it turns out at all, but hey, 90% of leaders end wars right before they're about to begin. First things first, you need to prove that whatever danger you have your eyes on is growing and must be stopped. Many countries wind up doing this, with Germany thinking Russia will soon trump them in power in 1914, and Bush believing Saddam was bent on getting WMDs and threatening the US. What the hell? Basically, you need to convince them that your country is facing dire consequences, and if you don't act now, you're done for. You can throw around vocabulary like gaps, red lines, points of no return, or time is running out to scare the public and really make them believe that this is necessary now. Now, of course, as a leader, you know that this is entirely just guessing. Usually, whatever outcome you're using to scare the people is the very worst case scenario. Using our modern world as an example, should North Korea or Iran develop a nuclear arsenal, it's still very unlikely they'd actually use it, and would probably fall into the same deterrence game that we've been playing for decades now. However, we're not trying to have a logical discussion with our citizens. We're trying to go to war here, so you need to make them believe that if nothing is done, it is so over. Almost always, though, the idea that you need to go to a preventative war literally implies that as of right now, you're already stronger and better than them. So make sure your citizens don't realize that. Thanks to actions like this, you as leader can trigger a rally round the flag effect in which people will come to their leader's side to be guided in a time of crisis. Like seriously, look at Bush's approval rating after 9-11. This is the highest ever recorded. It's thanks to these high approvals that leaders have the political power necessary to start wars in the first place. So you'll definitely want to get some. You need to convince the masses that war is going to inflict minimal effects on you and your country, but only if you do it right now. If people believe that the war is going to be long, costly, or even end defeat, they'll never end up backing it, so you need to change their minds. For example, Look at what they were saying about the war in Iraq. It is unimaginable that the United States would have to contribute hundreds of billions of dollars, and highly unlikely that we would have to contribute even tens of billions of dollars. The cost of any intervention would be very small. So how much did it really cost? $757 billion. Talk about how this war will be an easy fight with an inevitable victory. Highlight stuff like precision strikes with no collateral damage, to emphasize how much of a controlled scenario you have, posing little threat to your own country. You also need to lie to the people and make it seem like the enemy will totally and coincidentally act exactly how you want them to. So the war goes according to plan. Spoiler, they probably won't. Many people are going to soon realize that pouring their money into a long and useless war isn't really the best interest. But if you followed how to be a dictator, the people's opinions shouldn't be too much of a concern for you in the first place. If you are somehow in a, ugh, democracy. <laughs> It's still incredibly easy to manipulate the people for into achieving your goals. Just check out step five to keeping them in check. Does your country have problems? Of course it does. Why not cover them up with a war? Maybe you only want to invade a weaker country for your own gain, but your people would never support that. So you tie in everything else to make them completely support your cause. Like somehow the Iraq war was intended to be a warning to all who seek to make WMDs, toppling a potential aggressor, keyword is potential, restoring US credibility after 9-11, and somehow start a complete democratization of the Middle East that would mitigate terrorism. Obviously, this war didn't really accomplish any of that. But it's not about what you actually do, it's about what you set out to do. You need to consistently pump the lie that if we don't do something, there will be dire consequences, such as the bouts of power turning against your country, or others doubting your country's capabilities, especially if your citizens aren't too happy with you right now. Say you're ruining the economy, undermining human rights, exploiting resources for profit, you know, the fun stuff. You can use a war to throw all those problems out the window and shift their anger towards something else. War is usually the best distraction, because not only does it give your people a new straw man to direct all their hatred toward, but thanks to the self-proclaimed emergency, you can make a gambit for even more power. But don't lose. Seriously, don't lose. If you blow a distractive war, not only are all the problems going to come back, but with a fresh battle to your end, you're likely to come crashing down. Except for America somehow. I don't know they keep getting away with it.
Now it's time to really get those propaganda machines chugging, because you need to demonize your enemy. If your people realize that the conflict is just a clash of interests, then they might start to think diplomacy and compromise are more effective solutions, and we can't have that. So remember, this isn't a conflict of interests. This is a clash of the morally right and the no-good evildoers of the world. Now for a real-world example. You've heard this rhetoric before, and I'm not going to really highlight on it too much because frankly, I want money. But in 2022, a little something heated up in Eastern Europe. And yes, you know what I'm talking about. And since then, you've seen the constant demonization of Russia. You've seen the consistent framing as democracy versus autocracy, or free world versus evil, which has been consistently debunked as not the proper way to look at this conflict. Now, I'm not here to defend either side here, but in most wars, it's a lot more nuanced than these are the good guys and these are the bad guys and we hate them. Like, let's be real here. War rarely has a clear-cut good or bad guy. It's war. Maybe your opponent is a theocracy in which you can call them fanatics and martyrs who will stop at nothing. Maybe they're a monarchy, where you can paint them as bizarre and alien, and of course, impossible to reason with. However, painting them as crazy may not always play to your advantage. You also need to make sure they seem like sensible people who can be reasoned with so that you can justify an immense use of force and assure minimal retaliation. Basically, you have to explain, okay guys, these Iranians here, who are total religious nutjobs and are too crazy to be deterred, are smart enough to know not to retaliate when we completely carpet bomb their nation. You need to simultaneously make them seem insane and evil, while also being rational enough to not touch you in retaliation. Finally, before your troops start to march, you need to ensure that your country will keep itself in line. And the best way to do that is to spark the hawk inside everybody. You need to make people believe that peace is unpatriotic. That if you don't support this violent conquest, you're against your country and your people. The human mind likes to fit in. It really likes to fit in. And if you can apply groupthink to an entire nation, you have their minds under your control. You do this to marginalize and shut down your skeptics. If there's anyone actively questioning your war or your true motives, your citizens and you will quickly write them off as hating your country. Let's look at an example. In April of 2017, the Syrian government was believed to have launched chemical weapons attacks on the town of Khan Sekun. Outraged, the newly elected President Trump launched 59 Tomahawk missiles at the Shirat Air Force Base to immobilize their chemical and air resources. With this strike, bipartisan support poured in for the move. You had Democrats backing Trump for this military action. That's how much our belief that force is patriotic is ingrained into our nation. If you're wondering, the Shirat Air Force Base was back up and functional a few days after, and the strike did not change the course of war in any real way. You had bipartisan support for a president blowing stuff up. Bruh. By the way, I'm not defending Assad here. That man is a terrible person. I shouldn't be the one to tell you that. But thanks to the strike, the sheer level to which people truly support useless violence is displayed. So remember, if anyone criticizes or is skeptical about the war, tell them they're a filthy traitor and lock them up. So you've done it. You've completely mobilized your populace to war. Now what happens? Well, if you're powerful enough, you can coerce a nation into doing what you want solely out of fear, with little to no bloodshed involved. However, if you're taking on a nation a little more on par with you, you need to dig in deep and prepare for whatever is facing you ahead. I'm no expert in war tactics, and I don't pretend to be one, but you should definitely find someone who is if you intend to win anything anytime soon. Now go out there, follow my steps, and make me proud. Remember, I'm rooting for you. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't actually start any wars, or if you do, don't blame it on me. Please like and subscribe. This video is a pleasure to make and have a great day. Thank you.